we have all been there, downloading software only to discover it's asking us if we want the 64 or 32 bit variant. Some of us go straight for the 64 bit one, others don't know the difference between the two and choose randomly. Yes, I have seen that before. Before I explain anything, let's do a little experiment. I am currently on a machine with a 64-bit Intel CPU, as you can see for yourself. What would happen if I download it and try to use the 64-bit variant? As you can see, it works fine. Now let's completely uninstall that and give 32-bit a try. Weirdly enough, that works too? But isn't our CPU 64-bit? To understand all of this, let's look at how the two seemingly small differences in a program's compilation can be so different in reality. Back in 1985, the Intel i386 was introduced. That was the first commercial 32-bit CPU at that time. Skipping most of the details, its architecture belongs in a parent architecture called x86. This architecture defines what kind of instructions the CPU accepts and how it handles them internally. You might have even heard ARM before, which is utilized in recent Apple devices or even some newer servers. Well, ARM is a completely different architecture from x86. We won't cover that today, just know that its instruction set is completely different. Back to the Intel i386 example. We said it belongs in x86, but its more specific architecture is x86 underscore 32. When it first released, the concept of 32-bit code was obviously new at the time, with 64-bit compilers being used widely. Intel pulled the move that would influence the CPU direction to this day. Instead of only allowing 32-bit code execution, they made a compatibility mode for 16-bit code, so users could run their old programs normally. Well, when we reached 64-bit CPUs, compatibility modes for 16-bit and 32-bit instructions were still held, even in the latest CPUs. And if you're asking, yes, your i9-13900K can still run 16-bit or even 32-bit code. The fundamental difference lies in the memory regions they can reach. For 16-bit, it's a mere 64 kilobytes, for 32 bits, 4 gigabytes, and for 64 bits, you get a whopping 64 terabytes to 4 terabytes. Although you can understand how much of a beast x86-64 is, then we get into the fact that all of those architectures are years apart, meaning special features like SSE, AES encryption extensions, system call interfaces, and many more are non-existent on older systems. Although you would realistically never run 16-bit programs, your bootloader goes through a mode transition from 16-bit real mode to 32-bit protected mode, all the way to 64-bit long mode. This is mostly for compatibility with older bootloaders, and now it's, from a practical standpoint, way too late to remove these special modes. Windows 11 has already dropped support for x86, along with many Linux distros. FreeBSD is planning to do so in the future years, along with Debian. Note that this change doesn't affect the bootloader or programs the OSs can run. You can see 32-bit 7-zip working fine in the latest Windows 11 build. An exception here is macOS, which cannot really execute 32-bit programs anymore after a certain version. Overall, I suggest always prioritizing the program build made specifically for your architecture whenever possible. I hope you learned something from this video and until the next one, stay safe everybody.